looking for people who have been stuck in the ocean, searching for gold in an abandoned ship, logic puzzles and spam filters in your emails. What do all of these things have in common? Well, it, they may seem pretty unrelated, but they do all have one link, and it's what my talk is on, Bayes' theorem. Now, Bayes' theorem is a specific theorem in maths that essentially measures people's changing beliefs. And I'll update you, update you on this later as my talk goes on. But my aim is, at the end of this talk, you won't only just have a solid understanding of what the theorem is, but also I'm going to give you the tools to reprogram and unlock your brain so that you can also become what we call a Bayesian thinker, which means thinking more logically. Now, no more suspense. I'm just going to give you a quick look of what the theorem looks like. Please don't worry. I know it looks kind of complicated, and most people might not know what this means. It's OK. I'll break it down for you. But first, let's play a game. So I'm just going to tell you a few traits about myself. Well, not actually myself, but just pretend it applies to me. And you're going to tell me whether it's more likely that I'm a librarian or if I'm a farmer. So here are some things about myself. I'm very antisocial. I much prefer staying at home than going out with my friends. Uh, a lot of people would call me detail-oriented, and some of my friends may think that I come off as pretty awkward when they first meet me. And I'm also a huge nerd, and I'm pretty shy. So uh, most people would think that it's more likely that I'm a librarian, because the definition that I gave you really closely aligns with what a stereotypical expectation of what a librarian would be. However, that's where you're wrong. And it's more likely for me to actually be a farmer. And I'm going to tell you why. And this is why you need to use Bayes' theorem so you can get some perspective. Now, Bayes' theorem essentially describes the probability that a specific hypothesis is tr true given that an event happens. Now, if we apply this to our situation that I just described, um, P represents the probability of something happening, and then the funny little vertical line represents given that. So if I read this out according to our example, what we're going to see is the probability that I am a librarian, given that I am shy, is the probability that I'm shy, given that I'm a librarian, times by the probability that I'm sh uh, a librarian all over the probability that I'm shy. And we can work this out below. So as you can see, I just inputted the variables into the original equation. And we can just make a few assumptions. For an example, most librarians are probably shy, so I'm just going to put that at like 80%. And here's where most people make their mistake, and here's why most people thought that I was a librarian. It's because proportionately, there's so many more farmers than there are librarians. And we'll put input this into the equation as just 1 to 100 librarians to farmers, just for simplicity. And then we'll put that over the probability that I'm shy, which I'll just put as 50%. And what this works out to is actually 1.6%, which is way smaller than you would have imagined. And this be is because there are proportionately much fewer librarians than there are farmers. So even if 90% of librarians fit the description that I gave you, it would still be more likely to apply to a farmer because there's just simply more of them. Now, this is basically the central idea behind Bayes' theorem. And knowing this, we can say that Bayes' theorem also considers that updating beliefs is much better than holding on to beliefs. An example of holding on to beliefs is that I thought that all librarians were shy and nerdy. But instead, you should be updating your beliefs with information that you already know, such as there are more librarians in the world, uh, sorry, there are more farmers in the world than librarians. And knowing what we know now, we can go for round two. So, Given these traits, which is more likely? Linda is a bank teller, or Linda is a bank teller that is a feminist? Now, this was a psychological test that was conducted in about the 1990s, so I'll be following the same format. Here are some things about Linda, and I know it does sound like my name, but Linda is uh, quite outspoken and quite loud. A lot of her friends see her constantly attending protests or rallies about specific issues, and she always posts on social media about petitions or organizations that you should follow or sign up for. Which one do you think is more likely? Well, over 80% of people who took this test answered B. Linda is a bank teller that is a feminist. Why do we think this is more likely? Let's think about this logically. It doesn't really make much sense because 
bank tellers that are feminists are a subset of people that are bank tellers. Every bank teller that is a feminist is a bank teller anyway. So why would it be more likely for her to be a bank teller that is a feminist? Now, oh, that's a picture of Linda, by the way. Um, obviously, we don't really have the time to plug in all the mass from Bayes' theorem in this example. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify Bayes' theorem's basic ideas into two ways you can apply it to your everyday life. And the first way you can do it is rephrase a question. And then the second way you can do it is considering your priors. Now, rephrasing your question is really important. So the question that I gave you in the beginning about the likelihood of Linda being a feminist or a bank teller is actually slightly engineered for you to answer wrongly. Because I gave you an abstract term of more likely or less likely, which is something that the human brain can't really handle well. So what would be better is that if you said there are 100 people that fit this description, how many of them are bank tellers, how many are bank tellers and are feminists? And when the psychologist conducted this investigation, a huge proportion of people said B, which is, uh, sorry, said the correct answer, which is there are more bank tellers than bank tellers that are feminists. Another thing you can do is consider what we call priors. Priors in maths and in Bayes' theorem and probability in general are things that we know before we get any additional evidence in the problem. So for an example, I already knew that there are more bank tellers than bank tellers that are feminists. I didn't need to get any new information about Linda in this case. So once we know these two things and we apply it to this problem, we can get the correct answer, which is it's more likely that Linda is a bank teller. Now, zooming out a bit to Bayes' theorem in real life, Bayes' theorem can actually be used in spam filters in your emails, which is really interesting. So remember how I phrased Bayes' theorem as the probability of something given that something else? Pretend you're an algorithm searching for spam. What do you think the probability that this email is spam, given that it has win this, free money, free vacation, you're the heir to a billion dollar fortune? You'd say the probability is pretty high, and this is how Bayesian algorithms work. They just m automatically put the message in spam. Now, there is one weakness to Bayes' theorem that I do want to discuss, so please be careful before applying this to your everyday life. If your starting point is relatively inaccurate, then this will lead to a wrong conclusion. So for an example, if we look back at our librarian farmer shy example, you'll be able to see that if I think that there is a greater proportion of librarians that are shy, or if I think that there's a huge number of librarians in the world, like everyone's a librarian or something, then the probability will be super inflated and way too high. And when we apply this to real life, this means that we could perhaps inflate or deflate the probability of something happening just because of our own bias about how likely something is. However, look, going back to our old friend over here, I do think that the weakness to Bayes' theorem is actually incredibly beautiful and is a strength. Because what it demonstrates is that your belief is only as valid as your evidence to prove it, which is a truism about everyday life. And to have this proved in mathematical format with algebra and in probability, and for ha to have that prove something very intrinsic to human nature, I think is really beautiful. And I think there's a high probability that you will agree with me. Thank you.